Howard, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Thank you for having me. It's uh, great to see so many of your industry here to talk about what we're seeing. And I'd like you to tell me what trends you're currently seeing, really, in terms of uh, private equity portfolios and, and how that's influencing investor kind of behavior and strategies, I guess. I think there's two things we're seeing. The first is investors are waiting to receive proceeds from the sales of transactions that they've made over the last couple of years. And so you have a decreased amount of activity, but uh, as soon as things start getting sold, they'll, they'll be interested in reallocating. I think the other people, now that rates are not zero anymore, people are scrutinizing how the returns are being generated in private equity, whether it's multiple expansion or whether the companies are actually growing and producing more cash flow. Uh, and I think that's good. I think it's a return to normal. Um, you know, what we used to see in the 90s and the early 2000s, and maybe you saw less of in the, the late 2000s and 2010s, but I think it's back to normal and it's healthy. And it's actually more expertise required in a way. hundred uh, percent. So meaning managers have to be good at taking over companies and streamlining operations, increasing cash flows, increasing revenue, all the things that you would expect. But they were doing that, but they were also benefiting from the fact that money was cheap and they're no longer benefiting from that. They have to be clever with finding those value creation solutions now. 100%. Find the right opportunities and know what to do. Uh, talking about opportunities, private credit and infrastructure seem to be at the fore at the moment. Are you seeing that? Uh, yeah, both are in huge demand. So private credit's in a lot of demand just because people in a zero rate world didn't have huge allocations. And now that rates are more like 5%, it means that private credit generates you know, low double digit type returns. That's really satisfactory for a lot of investors. And so they're starting to increase their allocations. And then infrastructure really because of COVID and then also because of the inflation that we've seen, it really stood the test of those two things and produced the returns people expected from it. So it's not, it didn't surprise to the upside, but it did what people had long promised that it would do in those environments. And people are excited about that and continue to increase their allocations. We're talking about two areas that seem to be at the fore there, but what do you think is, is crucial and, and intrinsic, if you like, in, in building a, a good portfolio and, and you know, what is behind managing the successful co-investments as well? Yeah, I'm, I think the real trick is diversification and to be programmatic about the way that people deploy their capital in the illiquid space. So, you know, what we've observed over decades is that as long as people have a plan and they deploy their money in, say, over five years, and even kind of ratable portions over that period of time, and they're working with the right people, and they know what they're doing, they tend to have success in the illiquid asset classes. I think the people get themselves into trouble when they get excited in a particular moment in time and they go into a new asset class or they put too much capital to work in one year or one vintage. Other than that, we really think people do pretty well in, in the programs. And then in co-investment, the real trick is sourcing, being able to find opportunities, um, and second, being selective, meaning if you see 100, you really should be doing one or two. And, and you need to be able to see 100 to be able to have that selectivity. Can you provide insights into the growing popularity we're seeing in, in separately managed accounts, SMAs, and how would you say that trend shapes customization of investment strategies and, po and portfolios going forward? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the SMA um, approach, kind of a custom account approach, it allows the clients, particularly big institutional clients, to control their outcomes in a more specified way. They can design what types of investments they want to make. They can create guardrails around kind of size of company, geography, you know, strategy that it's associated with. The other thing is it gives them more control, um, meaning a lot of those accounts, they can be shut down. You can change the pacing. You just have more control as an institutional investor. So I like to think of it as you're taking a capability people have always liked, which is private equity or middle market private equity, and then you're able to provide it to the institutional investor in a way that fits more like a glove rather rather than you know previously where they had to take the one size fits all approach of a commingled fund and you just it is what it is take it or leave it this is a way for them to get the capability and customize it to what their needs their needs are you talked earlier about this being a, a trickier climate than we've seen in the past the, the expertise that's required in that and what you've described there it sounds like perhaps more bespoke solutions are going to be what we see I think that's right, meaning, and more niche strategies. You know, people who are an expert in finance or an expert in business services or an expert in a certain type of operation, as opposed to kind of the age of the generalist 
where they benefited from the fact that they would buy something and the multiple would expand as rates declined, I think that's passed. You know, they really need to have a lot of sector expertise, a lot of relationships to be able to source companies, and they have to be people management teams want to work with and respect. So I, th I think expertise is going to be a real key in those niche areas. And do you think increasingly geographic expertise will play into that as well? For sure. I mean, if you're not everywhere, you're sort of nowhere in, in 2024. So. If you aren't able to sort of sort through all the different opportunities and know what's going on in all the different markets and weigh up the relative risk and reward of those things, uh, you really can't play on a global scale in private equity anymore. You're talking about global scales there, there's 5,000 of your industry here at Super Return International. How valuable is that to come to a place where you can share ideas like this? It's, it's very valuable because you basically you, you can set up meetings with different people who ordinarily might take you a month to set up the same amount of meetings. You could do it in two days or three days. The other thing, you bump into people you didn't even plan to meet, who you wanted to meet, you talk to and form relationships. You also find out things you didn't know, right? There's been, I've already had you know two or three meetings today where I found out things I didn't know from people that were relevant. And there's, there's some opportunity that'll come from that, either from the investing side or from a client side. I, I think both, we're benefiting from both and being part of the event. Well, Fred, I hope you continue to have a really valuable time here. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much for having me.